right, in this video, this is part five to making a custom calendar from scratch. This will work in KOWP, KWGT, and KLOCK. We're gonna talk about the overlap. The overlap that I'm referring to here is when we create the first row, we will have the option of seeing this extra day from the month prior to. However, there was a bug that I ran across. Let me go ahead and address the bug. It's one minor tweak to the code, and I wanna show that to you right now. So I'm going to go to CraftCal V4, and if you have CraftCal V4, what you want to do is go over to Globals. Let's set the year to 2020. So you can come down here to your text global for year. Let's set it to 2020. And let's go ahead and set the month to February. So that'll be month two. Now, February 2020 on CraftCal V4 is showing the correct number of days. And notice we do have a leap year in 2020. However, when I go over to March, watch what happens. Now, we don't see the overlap because Sunday is the first day of the week, but I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to cut sun first off and look at the issue that we have here. We're in March 2020, and we just saw that February of 2020 had 29 days, yet we're seeing 28 from the overlap in March. So that's a bug, right? Well, here's the tweak that we have to make to the code to get the 29 to show up correctly. So let me scroll back to February real quick. Notice February the 29th of 2020 is on a Saturday. But when we come over here to March, it's saying that February, that Saturday was a 28. Here's how we fix that. I want to scroll down to row one, this code right here. And we have to tweak these two spots in red on the two lines at the bottom of the code. Now basically what this is going to do, and I'm going to explain this to you in this tutorial because the whole goal of this tutorial is to follow all four of these lines to get the overlap to work. So coming to this line right here, I'm going to explain what this code means later in this tutorial, but what we need to do is we need to do the following, plus GV year plus Y. Now basically what this is doing is, is it's going to look at a month of the current year that we have on our calendar. I did not have that in my code, so my assumption is that it's just going to look at the month of whatever current year it actually is. That might not make much sense right now, but go ahead and add that to your code. And we need to also add that to the last line of the code right after this M. So let's do plus GV year plus Y. Now I'm going to explain all this to you in a minute, but for now, for those of you that have the updated CraftCal V4, I'm about to update this to V5 with the code already fixed, but I know some of you already have your calendar themed the way you want it. So just go make those two changes. Let's check this and now notice that we do have the 29th showing up from that overlap. Very good. Now, for those of you who are following the entire tutorial series on making the calendar from scratch, if you watched part four, we did not cover these four lines of code that you see here. Well, that's what I wanna show you in this tutorial. So I'm gonna go over to calendar from scratch part four. Obviously this will be part five once I upload this to the free components folder. Let's go over to globals and let's just go ahead and add the code in there and then I'll explain what everything means in a moment. So let's come down to row one, that text global that we added in part four. And I'm just going to copy all of this green and red stuff and I'm going to paste it in and I gotta make sure I fix my parentheses and dollar symbols. So I copied the code, I'm going to delete the dollar symbol and the parentheses and I'm gonna put a comma. Basically, I'm right here. I'm gonna enter down to keep my code organized and now I'm gonna paste this stuff that I just copied. Now once all of that stuff is added in, if I check this, we're gonna start seeing some overlaps now. See that? We didn't see that in part four, but now we have it in part five. And yeah, I wanna show you why this works the way it works. So let's dive into that now. So the first thing I want to address before we dive into the module indexes and the FDOMs again that we talked about in part four, there's a new part to this code and it's the DFO. Well, what does DFO mean? I'm just gonna dive into row one, this long code that we have here, and I'm just gonna type in some stuff to explain what DFO does. So ignore this number up here and I'm gonna start typing. So DFO, and if I close that up, this will tell you how many days are in the current month. Now, I know it's not November, right now it is October and there are 31 days in October. Just in case you forget, number of days in each month 
I'm going to go to this website here and now we see all of the days in certain months. Now this is going to be changing on our calendar, right? So what we want to do is we want to come back into this code right here and after this O, I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to start typing in months. For example, month one. So I'm going to do a 1M, that means the first month. So there's 31 days in January. Uh, let's go to June, month number six. So I'm going to change this to a six. And now notice we're returning a 30 for month six. If we go to month seven for July, we're returning 31. Let's go to month two and notice we're returning a 28. Now, this is where my bug happened in the code. When it's February, it depends on what year we're on. And that's the only month where the number of days in the month will change, right? So that's why I had to add a little bit more to this code, where now I needed to put in a certain year. For example, 2018, if I follow that with a Y, this thing is not going to change at all. As a matter of fact, 2019, it's not going to change at all. But watch this 28 right here when I come down here and type in 2020. Now we have 29 days. That's the bug that I was addressing a moment ago. But since we want this to change dynamically based on where we are in our calendar, as we're just scrolling through months, you know, tapping from month to month, we have to use our globals in the place of these numbers that we see here and here. So what we do, just like in part four, if I want to do my month, I'm going to do GV month, close it up, put a plus, and then put a plus after the M. And now we want to change this 2020 to GV year and put a plus after it as well. So now whatever month and year we are on in our calendar, it's going to return the number of days in that month. So I'm just going to back out of here for a second. Obviously this is messing up my code. Don't even worry about what you see right now. But we're in November and November does have 30 days. Well, what we want to do in our code is we want to rewind a month. That way we can see how many days were in the month prior to November. So if I come back to row one, I can actually rewind a month by doing this. Come to that GV month minus one. Now it's going to look at whatever month we're on. We're on November. Take away one month. We're at month 10 which is October and notice we're returning a 31 now because there are 31 days in October. Now this is actually the code that we're going to be using inside of this overlap. Notice right here we have DFO GV month minus 1 plus M plus GV year plus Y. That's exactly what we have right there. And this same code here gets used on that last line right there. Now obviously I need to come in here and delete this now uh, since hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. And now we can dive into the FDOM and module index. So making sure I check this, that way we get rid of this extra stuff that we saw a moment ago. And just to make sure this code is working correctly, I'm going to go ahead and change my year to 2020. I'm going to go to February. Of course we're not going to see the whole month of February. So here's February of 2020. Let me go over to March. Now March starts on a Sunday. March 1st of 2020 starts on a Sunday. But remember, if we come up here and cut sun first off, notice we are seeing the overlap. This is the overlap from February of 2020. We are seeing that leap year. And again, that was that bug that I addressed earlier. So with that said, I'm going to cut sun first back on and we can simply tap up here at March 2020 to reset back to the current month we are on, which is October 2018. But since there's only one overlap from September, I'm going to go ahead and bump on up to November where we see quite a few overlaps. And that's what I want to explain over here with this little cutout that I have and the FDOM and module index. So notice this calendar here matches perfectly with what we have over here. And now let's do a little bit of math. So what I'm going to focus on right now, the first two lines, I'll come back and talk about them at the end. It was a bug that I thought I didn't have, but I did have, somebody did point it out to me. Those two parts fix uh, December to January. But let's just dive into this third line right here because Sunday is my first day of the week. So we got GV Sun first, all right? Now the code I just explained to you a minute ago, 
DFO GV month minus one plus M plus GV year plus Y. What in the world does all that mean? It's going to give you the number of days in the month prior to the month that you're on. Right now we're in November, so this is going to return the number of days in October. And the number of days in October was 31. So we're taking 31, subtract. Now we have the rest of this code to look at. This part right here. GVF DOM minus SI module index comma one. We talked about that in part four. The module index comma one is each one of those overlap groups that gives us a new day. Each one of these is an overlap group inside of that stack group. So down here in blue, we have F DOMs. In red, we have the module index of those overlap groups inside of that stack group. So GVF DOM, in part four, we talked about a number getting returned for the first day of the month. November's first day of the month falls on a Thursday, so F DOM is equal to four. So in parentheses, I'm gonna put the F DOM, which is four, subtract, SI module index. Now, the number we're trying to get here, y'all, the number I'm trying to show you how to get here is 28. The module index of this overlap group is zero. So SI module index, the index of this 28, its index is zero because it's the first overlap group. And then the rest of this code here is subtract one from that. So let's subtract one. Working all this out, we get 31 minus three, which gives us 28. And that's exactly what we have right there. Let's see how we get this 29 now. There's only going to be one piece that changes in this formula right here. And that piece is going to be the module index. So I'm gonna erase this zero, but notice everything else is gonna stay the same because the number of days in the month prior is still 31 because we're still in November, we're talking about October, 31 days in October, minus, that's always gonna be a minus, F DOM. Thursday is still the first day of the week for November, so F DOM is still four. Subtract the module index. So now we're talking about getting this 29 here. Its module index is one, so therefore I'm going to replace that zero that I erased a moment ago with a one, and obviously that's gonna change our answer here, but if we take 31 minus two now, four minus one minus one, 31 minus two is 29. Check it out. So let's skip on ahead up here to this 31. How do we get this 31? That's going to change just the module index because again, just to make sure you understand this, number of days in the month prior, that's still 31. That was October. Minus F DOM. F DOM is still four. Subtract SI module index comma one. We're trying to get this 31. Its module index is a three. Therefore, if I change this to a three, 31 minus zero here. And 31 minus zero is 31. So notice we are getting that 31 for that spot. And what's beautiful about this is that we can just simply copy and paste as you saw back in part four, because when we start coming later and adding colors and adding touches and all that stuff, all this SI module index stuff is gonna become super powerful because all we have to do is edit one little cell and then copy and paste that cell in row one and everything's gonna work out perfectly. Now let's just look at one more month to see if this makes sense. So I fast forwarded ahead to May 2020 and May 2020 I also did cut Sun First off and the reason why I'm doing this is I wanna show you this last line of code right here. This line of code is not gonna run because we're not on month one. This line of code is not gonna run because we're not on month one. And this line of code is not gonna run because Sun First is not on. So this is our only other option. So with that said, that is going to change a few things down here too. The F DOM, the order of these numbers changed because Monday is now our first day of the week. However, the module indexes stay the same because it's still the same overlap groups. The first overlap group has an index of zero all the way to the end where we have an index of six. So since we're in May, this part of the code here, DFO blah, 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 this is talking about the number of days in the month of April because it's the month before May. The number of days in April is always gonna be 30. We wanna subtract 
GVF DOM. So let me show you how to get April 27th. April 27th. Well, F DOM, we're talking about the first day of the month for May. That falls on a Friday. So F DOM is going to be five. So we have five right there for F DOM. Subtract the overlap groups index. Well, we're talking about this number here. Its index is going to be zero. And now we're going to subtract two. You may notice this formula is very similar to what we just went over, except earlier we subtracted one, now we're subtracting two. 30 minus three gives us 27. And that's exactly how we get that 27 right there. Let's do one more just so we can see how the code works out very nicely. Let's go to this uh, Wednesday, the 29th. And just like earlier, the only thing that's going to change is the module index. Again, because we're in May, we want to get the number of days in the month before May. That's 30 days in April. Subtract FDOM. FDOM is still five because the first day in May is on a Friday in the year 2020. Subtract the module index. We're on this one now. Its module index is a two. So we're going to change this to a two. And then we subtract two as always for this formula here. 30 minus one gives us 29 and that's exactly what we want. And this code works nicely for all the months, but for some weird reason, and I haven't really gone back and looked at it to be quite honest with you, but there was an instance where a person pointed out to me, they would go over to January. For example, let me go over to January. And they showed me a picture where it was showing 30 here instead of 31. And we should definitely always see a 31 for overlap in January because December always has 31 days. I don't know what the heck was going on, but uh, I actually couldn't get this to happen again. I took these two lines of code away. It still worked, but what the heck. I'm going to leave them here. Maybe it had something to do with codes later on in this calendar. But here's what these two things are saying. If Sun First is on and our current month is one, well, let's do that. Sun First is on and our current month is one. What we want to do is we want to take 31 minus whatever F DOM is and then subtract the module index and then subtract one. But notice my order of operations here for all of these formulas. It's basically the same thing, but for some weird reason, I'm just going to manually use 31 here because if we're in month one, we're always talking about 31 days being in the month prior to that. It's December. Maybe it had something to do with the year change, but in all honesty, the formulas are still doing the same two things that these formulas did, except we're addressing one month in particular when we're on January. Feel free to take these two lines of code away, see if they work. I'm going to leave them here because we have even more coding to do, obviously. We have to finish all of the other rows. We have to come in and put colors for our events. We have to have an agenda down here. So there's no telling uh, why these two codes may have to stay inside of here. But uh, yeah, there you have it. That's part five to creating a calendar from scratch. We have a long ways to go. I wouldn't even say we're halfway yet, folks. But yeah, we had a bug fix here addressing the leap years, and now we have overlaps for row one. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.